When you talk reputational risk, let's hypothetically talk about a large high rise in Canada. Pick one, we all know what they are in your, your jurisdictions. But if you have a pension fund or a public company that owns this asset, they want to make sure that that building's safe for their occupants and safe for their investors. Hypothetically, when you take a look at um, IP addresses and you take a look at the vulnerability of these in the marketplace, you can actually envision people getting in and shutting elevators down. You can get them opening magnetic lock systems. You can get them turning on lights. You can get them getting into your power grid. And you can basically jeopardize the safety of your building. And, you know, we could talk about this at length as to what does it mean to lock down an elevator system with um, leaderships of a company inside of those. And the list could just go on and on. But that is incumbent of the owner, developer, uh, holder of this real estate to ensure that their buildings are safe in the marketplace when the occupants come in in the morning and leave at night. Reputational risk in the marketplace is uh, I suspect is one of the major stay awakes of public and private real estate companies. You only get one chance to say that you're proactive, taking care of your buildings, taking care of your inhabitants, taking care of your shareholders. And that reputational risk is something that you're going to see the risk man officers in our clients, they're going to have to answer to their boards. They're going to have to say we're in compliance, we're doing our best, we can't guarantee. And we've retained great consultants that have strong track records, that have mitigated risk across the country. We're giving them the confidence internally to be able to go into the outward marketplace and say we're doing our best in the marketplace to maintain and grow our reputation as, uh, as a real estate company.